Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Susie, and in today's video, I have a fun collaboration with all of these other amazing creators. Be sure after you finish my video, you go check theirs out. I will have the link in the description box below. So let's go ahead and get started with today's video. So this collaboration is actually Last Thing Thrifted wasn't actually a requirement that we do the last thing thrifted, but I still have this box in my car that I haven't unloaded yet full of the last things I thrifted. I did get this uh, big Lazy Susan, which I'm keeping for, it's great for painting. I got this silver tray. I love making these over. And I got a little teapot and these amazing canisters. They're gonna be an easy flip. I don't think I'll do anything to that uh, butter dish, but I also got this metal file cabinet that I thought would be a fun makeover. So let's go ahead and get started with project number one. I'm going to start with this little teapot. It's really kind of outdated, but I do love the wooden handle and the knob on it. So the first thing I do with all of my thrift flips, as y'all know, is clean them up. I got all the tape off. I actually took this one to the sink and washed it really good with Dawn dish soap, made sure that it was good and dry. And now we're going to put a mold on it. I have already dusted the Village Market Mold from IOD with cornstarch, and now I'm using iod air dry clay to make the mold the iod molds are so fun and you can use them over and over and over again um, that's one of the reasons i love molds and stamps so much is you can just continue to use them for so many different projects and the iod ones have this uh, little micro rim that it makes the super easy to clean the edges up so i just smooth the back of the sheep and then I am going to use gravity to pull it out. And I am going to take my fingers and just make sure that all the edges are cleaned up. Because sometimes you'll have a little bit of residue. And my favorite glue to use is this Type Bond Quick and Thick Glue. And I like to spread it evenly but thinly over the whole mold. Be sure to get to the edge of everything. You want it to be stuck down really good, but you don't want any glue to be smushing out of the sides. So I put that onto the teapot. I'm gonna let it sit for just a few minutes before my next step while I do this other little thing. And I remembered that the cameo mold had this cute little cameo with a sheep and a little girl. So I thought I would do a couple of those cameos as well. And I have some vintage glass cups that came in a, I bought a $3 mystery box at a thrift store and they were in the mystery box, and I don't really have any other use for them, so I thought I would make them a little vignette kind of thing with this teapot and the sheep theme. So I made two of these cameo molds up, and I am going to glue them in the center of the glass. The reason I chose these glasses is I love the it's not hobnail, but whatever that other pattern is in the center, it looks so good when it's painted. When you put your molds, especially on a uneven surface like this, you really want to make sure that it's pressed down, especially around all the edges, but you need to do it kind of gingerly because you do not want to mess up your impression on the front of the mold. So just gently press around the edges and make sure everything is stuck really well. I like to paint my molds at least one coat when they are still wet. And um, your air dry clay will automatically shrink and sometimes crack in the drying process. So I find that if I give them a good coat of paint before they dry, it slows the drying process down just enough that there is no cracking. There is usually still a little bit of shrinking, but no cracking at least. So I went ahead and gave all these molds one good coat of paint and I'm using 
carriage house. Uh, this is one of my favorite greens from Fusion. It can be used for any season, spring, summer, winter, fall. It's just the perfect green for all your projects. Um, all of the pro products that I use to upcycle are available on my website, suzyonthefarm.com. All the IOD, Fusion Paint, and Recycle Decoupage papers are on there, and I will go ahead and leave that in a link in the description box below as well. So I got a coat painted on these and then I let them sit overnight and then I came back and I did a second coat and a little touch up coat as well before moving on to the next step. the next morning and you can see all the clay and paint is dry and there's just a little bit of shrinkage I need to go fill that in and go ahead and finish getting these all painted up be sure um, you also paint the bottom of your projects I usually do that last after everything else is cured but you could also um, do that first I just like to do it last it seems to be um, easier for me once my project is complete so I gave everything um, full coats of this carriage house, and then we're going to come back with some white wax. And I love using white wax over any paint, really, but I think it really is beautiful over this green color. It does change the color some, but it's just, um, it softens everything up and brings out all those details in those molds that you just can't really see as good with a solid coat of paint. So I'm gonna use DIY white wax, y'all. I have been wanting to use some Fusion white wax, but I bought this little bitty jar of white wax uh, before I even started selling Fusion paint, so well over a year ago. And y'all know how much white wax I use, but I am just now finishing up this little jar of white wax. So it goes a long way, and that's not just, you know, the DIY wax, it's all white, all wax last a really long time. You do not use that much. So I'm putting a good coat over all of the paint and then wiping it back with a dry microfiber towel. And I'm gonna do the lid and the teapot. And then I'm also going to go ahead and white wax the wood just to you know protect it a little bit. It was kind of dry. I sanded that knob down as good as I could. And then I'm going to put the white wax on the wood too. And then this little project is done. And I love this little um, teapot. And the cups just give it just a little bit extra in your vignettes. I can see this sitting um, as a centerpiece in the table or in a china cabinet or just anywhere in your kitchen on a little riser. This would be so cute. Mm -hmm. Project number two, we're gonna do these canisters and they were in great condition. I love the color. They still have their seal and it is clear and they were clean. I did take them to the sink and I gave them a good washing and let them dry really good. And this is gonna be an easy thrip, flip. I have um, these blue transfers from the traditional pots transfer book that I have never got to use, and I thought that they would be perfect on these little canisters. So I had to cut one of them down just a little bit to fit on the small one, and I just chose three that went well together, although they all go well together. Um, these all had some French wording on them. 
And so I just put them on to the little canister, crock canisters. It's real easy to use a transfer on something smooth like this. Matter of fact, you really want to be careful because once you lay it down, it's already sticking. And you just use the little tool that it came with, rubbing as you go and pulling the plastic backing up. And I was just burnishing on. I did notice with this really shiny material, if I tried to burnish with the backing like I usually do, it kind of started to rub some of the of it off. So I just used my fingers to make sure everything was stuck down good. And I did seal these with a um, glossy clear coat. And I went ahead and just did the bottom part with the clear coat just to seal the transfers so they could be wiped down with a wet towel or something because they can still actually be used. For project number three, we're gonna do this silver tray and I always pick these up if they're a pretty good size. It looks like I paid $2.99 for this one and it's probably, you know, 11 by 13 or something like that. Not huge, but good size. So I cleaned it up really good. This one did have a lot of scratches and everything. So I am definitely going to paint it. Um, it's not, you know, full on silver and they just don't really sell like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one two coats of casement. This is a bright white color and it's becoming one of my go-to whites of the fusion paint. Drying in between coats, I did two, maybe, yeah, two coats of paint before moving on to the next step. Also, I did go ahead and paint the back of this one. Sometimes I leave the back in the silver just because, so the paint doesn't get scratched or anything, but the silver was pretty um, scratched up on this one. So I went ahead and painted the back too. And this is from the Spring Blocks. This is a new Roy Cycled decoupage paper. And sticking with the whole sheep theme, I use this one because it has those pretty little sheeps in that field there. So I used my finger to, you know, or actually I think I used a transfer stick to mark it where to cut so it would fit perfectly in the bottom of this tray. And then I'm gonna use the Fusion Decoupage and Transfer Gel and I'm going to mist my paper. I start with a small strip and this just helps me avoid wrinkles. Um, the water also seems to help me. I've heard some people say that it's harder for them with it wet, but it's just been a game changer for me wetting the paper. I don't know why, but I just don't get any wrinkles that way. Um, maybe I'm just getting better at decoupaging too. I have been practicing and I absolutely love it. So I just, um, in sections, finished decoupaging this down using the transfer gel and then I do another coat over the top of it and then I am going to let it dry. paper was dry, I decided I wanted a little bit more detail and I wanted to bring out some of that blue that's in the background of the paper. So I took some champness and just dry brushed it. Um, first of all, I was going to do it really light, just hitting the high spots, but the more I did it, the more I liked it. So sometimes that happens. Things don't always go as planned and sometimes they turn out better than your plan. So I went ahead and dry brushed all of that paint um, pretty thick. And then after it was dry, I really loved the look of silver distressed through paint. So I came back with my little finger sander, sander and I distressed all of the raised parts on the tray, bringing back a little bit of that silver. Wiped it down really good. And then I'm, for the last step, I'm just gonna go over everything 
with a coat of, you guessed it, white wax just to soften everything up. I did the same technique to the very back of the tray, and this tray is complete, and I absolutely love how it turned out. If y'all don't care, go ahead and take a minute to give this video a thumbs up and just leave a comment below letting me know which one was your favorite in today's projects. That just helps YouTube know that you're enjoying my videos and it helps them know to share it out to other people who love the same thing as we do. So I appreciate you guys doing that so much. Today's final project actually ended up being my favorite, I think. I thrifted this metal file cabinet thing, and I'm going to keep it for myself, but I wanted to fix it up some, and um, the first, I'm going to use a paint and lay on it. So I'm just going to paint the bottom front of this with casement. I'm going to do a couple coats, and then I'm going to use the uh, Lattice Rose paint and lay. It's a gorgeous paint and lay with all these vintage wallpaper type papers and I thought that that would be a perfect addition to this um, filing cabinet. So I'm going to use the beautiful floral one on the front and I'm going to do all four sides with a different vintage wallpaper. So the way the paint inlays work is you put a coat of paint and you put your paint inlay into the wet paint and it transfers to the paint. So you get your image in your paint. Um, so I'm going to do a pretty even, pretty thick coat here, and then I'm going to mist my paint and lay. I've already cut it down two size. I'm going to mist it, and then I'm going to lay it onto the wet paint and press it in really good in all the areas, making sure that I have the paint making contact in every spot. If you don't um, do this part right here, sometimes you will not get um, as crisp an image. Once you got your paper laid down, you want to mist it again, and that will activate the paint and begin to embed it into your paint. Like I said, I'm going to do this on all four sides. So while that one's drying, I'm going to do the next side. Same thing, two coats of paint and put the inlay into the wet paint after misting it. Press it down really well and then let them dry. Now I'm using Fusion Paint, which has a built-in top coat. So you like, I want to stay with it. Um, with some paints, you know, it doesn't have a top coat. So you don't have to necessarily take it off right away. But once this dries, you want to get it off immediately from the Fusion Paint. Because of that built-in sealer, it will seal your paper in if you don't. So to remove it, I wet it again after it is good and dry wet it let it sit for just a second and then you can easily pull your paper back up and as you can see the beautiful image is now transferred into your paint this one turned out absolutely perfect i love the vintage feel of it i love the texture I can't tell you how satisfying it is to pull back these paint inlays. If you haven't tried them, don't be afraid. They're so much fun to use. They're definitely not perfection. So if that's something that you strive for on all your projects, maybe paint inlays are not for you. But I love the perfectly imperfect of them. And once I get them all pulled back and dried, I am going to seal them in. Now, usually I don't brush on a sealer, but I've been watching a lot of people and they say as long as you do it with a very light hand with your brush loaded up with sealer, you can brush 
on the sealer and I was able to do that I had a little bit of smearing on the back there but like I said perfectly imperfect I think it turned out great to finish this off I am going to paint the top part of this box in fusion rose water in two coats and then I'm going to heavily distress it all all the edges all the corners and everything because like I said previously I love the metal look when it is distressed under paint so that's going to finish up this project I hope that y'all have enjoyed all of these this box has turned out like I said to be my favorite of today's let me know which one was your favorite and please don't forget to go watch all the other ladies creating from the last thing thrifted playlist down in my comments um, love you guys so much appreciate you watching my channel and I will see you Wednesday